Welcome back to The Breakfast. The federal government has released the timetable for categories of businesses to register after it opened the portal for prospective beneficiaries to assess 75 billion naira survival funds on Monday, September 21, 2020. A statement issued in Abuja by the Project Delivery Office stated that the portal which opened at 10 p.m. has educational institutions as the first category of beneficiaries to register. This will be followed by businesses in the hospitality industry on Friday, uh, September 25th, beginning from 12 a.m. The statement adds that the portal will also be open to all the categories of small businesses from 12 a.m. on Monday, September 28, 2020. The Survival Fund is a conditional grant to support vulnerable micro and small enterprises in meeting their payroll obligations and safeguard jobs in MSMEs from the shock of the COVID-19 pandemic. The scheme is estimated to save at least 1.3 million jobs across the country while targeting an average of 35,000 individuals per state. And with us on the breakfast to discuss this is uh, Fatai Olayemi, is a lead growth support services Fate Foundation, and also a stockbroker and investment analyst, Vincent Oshoma. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Thank you thank for you. having me. I'm going to start with uh, uh, Mr. Olayemi. What is your assessment of the, the government's latest effort to save uh, small businesses? Yeah, um, the effort or the scheme is a welcome idea. Um, recently, Faith Foundation uh, carried out a survey uh, about the impact of MSME, uh, impact of COVID on MSMEs in Nigeria. And one of the, the areas where we found so, uh, where, we, where we found important uh, support to be rendered is the areas captured by this 75 billion uh, Naira fund. So for me, um, it's a good way to go, uh, but whether it is enough or not, is another question to, you know, to be discussing. But again, um, it's, it's, it's a very good way to go. It's a very good approach to save jobs uh, and help the economy to grow. All right, and then, then uh, Mr. Oshoma, you're a stockbroker and an investment analyst. Um, do you agree with uh, Mr. Adeyemi's position, or do you have uh, do you have other uh, thoughts? Yeah, I, I quite uh, thank you very much. I quite agree with his position. Is a good step. Is a right step in the a good step in the right direction, uh, and it's something that is welcome because we all know the impact of the pandemic on businesses. As, and most affected is those in the micro and small uh, uh, SMEs level. So this step is, is a good step in the right direction. But the only thing, just like you also mentioned, is that if it is enough, because when you look at it, you are talking about just uh, 1.3 million persons. And we know that the number of MSMEs in Nigeria are far above that number. So there's still a lot to be done. And I think that the federal government started starting this will help in stimulating other response, especially from states and maybe possible private individuals to help these um, vulnerable individuals in our community. Okay, hopefully we get to we get to address, you know, if it's enough and what more, you know, uh, the government may be able to do before we end this discussion. But back to Mr. Olayami, uh, why do you think they chose to commence with the educational institutions before others? And, uh, you know, would you have recommended a better order um, that uh, could have been adopted? Yeah, uh, I think if, if you check the impact of COVID-19 on MSMEs in Nigeria, uh, one of the sectors that was um, badly hit is um, educational sector. Um, so starting with educational sector, you know, it, that could be a reason for it. But I, I'm also, <laughs> um, that sector is a sector that has so many female entrepreneurs in Nigeria. And there is a lot of clamoring for supporting female entrepreneurs. Perhaps federal government was looking at the area of uh, encouraging women. You know, I don't know, I'm not speaking for them, but that could be the reasons why, one of the reasons why that is done. However, um, in my own opinion, in terms of uh, registering for the support, registering for the loan, I don't think 
uh, registering sector by sector would be the right way to go in the sense that most of MSMEs out there, uh, what they know is there's an opportunity they need to apply for. They don't even go extra mile to, to look at the aspect of oh, which one, uh, which sector is considered first, which one is uh, later. So they just feel, oh, this is an opportunity and I need to apply. So when they get you know, frustrated in terms of applying and reapplying, and because it is not their own uh, sector that is considered yet, they may be frustrated and you know, not continue with the application. I would have you know, looked at the angle of, uh, let all sectors to be considered registered ones, and the disbursement will be in phases. Okay, education uh, will be the first one to be considered for disbursement, followed by hospitality and, you know, what have you. So, yeah, for me, um, um, I just think, you know, that's their own approach, the way they feel. But if I'm going to look at it in my own way, I would have said, okay, let all, all the MSMEs, you know, let all of them register, then if we are going to do sector by sector in terms of disbursement, we can now, uh, this, the CRM we receive, we, as in we sort, you know, by sector, and we can now start disbursement sector by sector. But again, uh, that's how the field can do it best. Hopefully, it's going to be um, a, a fruitful uh, process at the end of the day. Okay, nicely put. Uh, Mr. Oshoma, I'm, I'm going to bring you in now. The whole point of this fund is to support uh, vulnerable micro and uh, small enterprises in meeting their payroll obligations and also to safeguard jobs in the MSMEs from the shock of COVID-19. How optimistic are you that this move is the right one? Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, I'm quite optimistic, like I said earlier on, is a step in the right direction. And I hope that it achieves its um, intended objective. But uh, we also have some, yeah, I'm also concerned because things like this, starting with the being initiated by we will know the issues of political interference, which we only have for good programs like this. And that may not affect, may affect the impact, the result that is expected from the program. On that thing, I also want to uh, highlight is the fact that most times there is always a poor implementation of government projects. So I, I, I just hope that poor implementation will not achieve, will not affect the intended goal that is that this program is expected to uh, achieve. The so another thing I also want to draw attention to is the fact that the, the program, for you to participate in program, people have to register online. And from reports, a, a lot of MSMEs, especially those at the macro level, a lot of those operating in that space are not educated. They have less than about 40 something percent of them have maximum of primary education. So that may affect participate, their participation. So I think they should, they should also think of having uh, opportunity of having centers where people can go to to register for this program or have an outreach session where they can go and meet them in their place of uh, businesses to see how they can get them to participate in this program. So outside that, uh, it builds um, concerns. I'm quite optimistic that it will affect, it will achieve the intended objective and can kickstart other initiatives such as this. Okay, and, and I'm also hoping that the um, enlightenment and the uh, information about these funds are, have been properly you know, done um, so everyone is aware that these things are available. Um, Mr. Olaimi, let's, let's come back to you now. An estimated 1.3 million jobs across the country will be saved. Um, 35,000 persons per state, uh, according to estimations, um, of course, uh, will benefit from this. Uh, with our skewed history, when it comes to implementation, um, what are the chances that we will be able to come close to this target? And how soon do you expect us to see the effect? Yeah, thank you very much for that, for that question. Um, Nigeria, <laughs> Nigeria um, or, or do I say our agencies, uh, we are known for uh, announcing a scheme uh, before, you know, thinking through the entire, you know, end-to-end -end process. Uh, that, for me, from my own experience, is a major challenge. Uh, reaching 1,300 is not, uh, 1 million 300 people is not a problem. Uh, I think it, it is achievable and that can be easily achieved. However, uh, how to, to, get, to get it achieved 
is the major challenge I have in the whole process. End-to-end uh, -end process is not clear yet. Uh, we, we are only, you know, hearing about uh, people uh, calling for people to register. But in terms of end-to-end -end process, uh, when, we are, when, when we set a standard like that, we, we set a goal of 1.3 million uh, jobs to be saved. Uh, do we even have uh, M&E, what, what we call monitoring and evaluation, to be able to check that the purpose, the goal of the, the scheme is achieved at the end of the day? How do we get that achieved? Of course, it's, it's very easy to, to talk about numbers, to say, you know, we're going to achieve ABC. But the major challenge is in how. How do, how do we get it achieved? I, I think that is, that is the only aspect uh, that I'm curious to know more about. But again, to get it achieved, I think is, is very easy. Uh, we, we do have, according to Smidam, we have over 41 million uh, MSMEs in Nigeria. And if we are looking at 1,300,000, it's 1, 1, just like a tip of iceberg. So, uh, so for me, it is achievable if the process is well spread out and you know, end-to-end uh, -end process is clear. Okay. That can uh, be achieved. Uh, and uh, Mr. Oshoma, you, you already were speaking of some of the uh, challenges that you, you know, um, are expecting, you know, might be, uh, be issues. Um, what are some of, you know, for you, some of the major issues in your mind that could compromise this plan? And how do you think the government can work to avoid them? Yeah, thank you very much. Like I earlier mentioned, uh, political interference is a major yeah. one. Um, some persons can, uh, can, the political class can hijack this and turn into something that have to do with political patronage. So, and at the end of the day, it will know which those that actually need them. So, I think that's one thing the implementers of uh, implemented, uh, implemented, those implementing this project to watch out for. So, it, it does not get hijacked uh, by those um, political uh, guys. The another thing they also, uh, also look at for is that, like I mentioned, a lot of the those in the micro level are not uh, educated, so they should beyond the portal registration. They should look for a way to get them across to them, so that they can participate in this process. Otherwise, at the end of the day, when the registration is over, a lot of them will be complaining that this program that was intended for them, they were not even aware of it, and it did not get to them. So I think that's what that on that thing they could also watch out for. Another thing I also I always also like to mention in the is the fact that. The, the, the government decided to put uh, to make it 35,000 for every state. But you and I are, are, are aware that not states don't have equal number of MSMEs. There are some states that have more, especially Lagos, states like Lagos, Oyo, and uh, uh, Kano from statistics. They have a lot of SMEs. So giving everybody equal 25,000, I don't think it will be good for everyone, especially for those states that have a lot of number. I think they should also consider states that, in terms of the numbers that they already have with uh, speed and should consider those states that have more numbers and I give them more, I allocate some more to them. Outside, maybe it could cost by outside the 1.3 million. So maybe 35,000 can be general for everybody. Then some states that have more SMEs, it can give them more, more do, space. Do, do you think that, you know, from what you just mentioned now, that has happened because of uh, improper planning? Yeah, I will attribute that to improper planning because uh, the records are there, the data are there, facts are there for them to work with. And we are, like if, uh, uh, Safata I mentioned, we have about 40, uh, 40 something million SMEs. They have the data and they have been broken down state by state. And we also know that those at the macro level are, are more than 90% of that number. So they should they work with this data and look at how to take care of these and um, these individuals yeah. that are in the various sectors of this um, the, uh, we are talking about. It's not just to have a general uh, general approach for everyone because we all know that they are not at the same level. And the MBS and the Bureau of Statistics they also report also show that they are not at the same level educationally. So having a blanket approach for everybody to go online, we know not everybody is the tech savvy. So it will definitely throw out a lot of persons that are auto participate. All right, and, and one thing that I earlier spoke about was uh, the information uh, reaching every single, you know, one of them. Um, Mr. Olayemi, I'm going to ask you about this uh, now. Uh, there are some businesses that are viable uh, that unfortunately might be unaware of this opportunity. What do you think happens to them and how do you think they can be reached? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, like Mr. Osoma just said, uh, majority of 
businesses that are targeted under this scheme, all under uh, micro and small businesses. And they're like, oh, in fact, over 90% of businesses in Nigeria. And most of them are, you know, are, are still operating informally, you know. Uh, so to reach out to all of them, I, I think more must be done. Um, firstly, from the government, uh, I, I don't know if there are jingles on, on radio, on TV, to sensitize people, particularly radio that is, you know, very uh, close to or closer to some of these people at um, local environment. So I don't know if, you know, I've not really seen so much in that regard. So more, more to be done. And apart from that, I think um, and enterprise development institutions in Nigeria must also be involved. Um, take us, uh, we had the news. Uh, we have to do the, uh, the process when, you know, they need to uh, access it. So we have to send it to everyone within our platform, even beyond our platform, just to sensitize people, to get them ready to, to be able to apply. I think all, all other EDIs must do this, the same thing. And beyond that, individually, individually uh, people that are informed, you know, must also inform other people. Uh, yeah, we just need to, everybody must play a role in this case because obviously from what we've seen so far, there is a limit to what government can do or what, <laughs> what they are set to do. So, you know, different agencies, um, MSME associations and stuff, you know, must actually uh, come to, you know, uh, support um, MSMEs in this regard. Thank you. All right. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Mr. Shoma, we're about to wrap up, so I just want to still, you know, ask you uh, about this. Um, what would you say to those that might hesitate to apply for this government grant? Yeah, what I would say to them, Arwen, is because uh, we all know the, the trust deficit between the people and the government. So a lot of persons do not want to take it serious. I only encourage them that there is no harm in giving it a shot. They don't get to lose anything because if at the end of the day, the others are getting the fever that they did not give that give it a shot. So you should give it a shot and uh, provide everything that uh, necessary information that is required of them. So I also uh, expect the implemented those implementing the program to uh, sensitize people more. Like Mr. Pata said, do more sensitization. Partner with uh, stakeholders that are already like enterprise uh, development organizations and firms that are already in this um, uh, business partner with them to reach out to more people. They also need to also partner with other social political stakeholders in the, in the system so that we know that this thing goes down, not just uh, being there in the news, but it doesn't get to those that it ought to reach. I think that's, that's in, in it. So Zalai, I mean, do you expect that um, this will work entirely to boost the economy as hoped? Um, or would you, you know, expect that more grants will be required uh, in the future? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, I strongly believe um, is like I said initially is is a good way to go. Um, it, but for me, it's like a starting point. Uh, we are talking about 41 million, more than 41 million MSMEs in Nigeria, and we are capturing, so to speak, uh, just like 1.3 of 1.3 million of what 41 million. You know, it's still. Um, well, we can say it's a starting point, um, and government can do more in this regard. Uh, other uh, private agencies that, that can also contribute, probably in terms of CSR, uh, international agencies are, are also contributing in this regard. Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a good starting point, but there are more to do. But take, for instance, this is more like financial support. Um, if we are to build resilience in MSMEs, for them to be able to truly and effectively, effectively survive uh, the impact of COVID-19, uh, the support must go beyond uh, financial. It must be both financial and non-financial. Um, I know <clears throat> the federal government is doing something around uh, clinics and stuff, but um, how many people can actually feel it? I think Smidan. Uh, must be strengthened in this regard. SMEDA must be asked to do more to carry out all those support services. I expect something like uh, virtual support services where entrepreneurs can 
you know, access at any point in time online to get different uh, business advisory support, uh, even applying. Some of this, like we, talk, we talked about, how do people get to know about this opportunity? I expect something like airplane where people can call in uh, because these people in rural areas that, that we are saying they do not have access to internet. Most of them are using phone. So they can easily call in to find out more about this uh, opportunity and how they can uh, uh, sign in to, you know, to enjoy the opportunity. Yeah. And uh, a final yeah, question it, it, going to... A final question going to Mr. Vincent Oshoma. I, I want to know your thoughts on uh, the government also helping out uh, to solve other uh, factors that affect businesses that grants may not be able to, uh, to solve. Yes, that's very, very important because, like you mentioned, it's not, uh, the challenges of uh, MSMEs is not just financial. There are other challenges, and research have shown that the one of the major challenges is their, yes, their skill gap. A lot of them, they go into business, they don't have the required skills to manage this business and also to take the business to the next level as the business starts growing. So I think steps should be taken, like I mentioned, they expand the clinics that are being the institute and also partner. I think more partnership uh, is required with uh, the organizations that are involved in these uh, activities. So partnering with them to reach out to more people and also the stakeholders to drive it down. It's not just to be on the radios, be on the TVs. I think drive it down to the interland, to the local community, so that more people will get there. Another thing the government also needs to do is that like, is the infrastructural deficit and the way it affects the areas it affects the, the MSMEs, especially in the area of power supply. And also looking at them, tax issues, a lot of them are overtaxed. And so it's something that government should also watch out for. Because the report he mentioned that Space Foundation did, but the, one of the things that came up from that report was the issue of tax. And so I think if you look at such reports and take steps in take, uh, take, uh, removing these problems, I need to help them, uh, this sector to grow, especially because it's the sector that employs the highest number of Nigerians. So anything you do for that sector, you have been for the for Nigerians. Fatai Olayami and uh, Vincent Oshoma, thank you both for joining us on The Breakfast. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.